Trinity, one God who journeys with us these 40 days and sustains us with the gift of grace. Amen. Amen. Let's acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance and God's mercy. Holy God, we confess to you our faults and failings. Too often we neglect and do not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil rather than steward your creation. We cause hurt through your cause to heal. We choose fear over compassion. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us as we seek to follow in your way of Brothers and sisters, hear the good news. 
God so loved the world that God gave God's only son so that all may receive life. This promise is for you. God embraces you with divine mercy, forgives you in Christ's name, and revives you in the Spirit's power. Amen. 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 Our opening hymn this morning is number 326, Bless Now, O God, the Journey. Our first reading this morning comes from the second and third chapters of Genesis, and our first reading will, will, will relate to our second reading. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it, and the Lord commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Now the servant was more crafty than any of the other wild animals that the Lord had made. He said to the woman, Did God say you should not eat of any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, 
You may eat of the fruit of the, of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that's in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, for you shall die. But the servant said to her, the woman, you will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some of it to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. Word of God, word of life. Our psalm this morning is, is number 32. Happy are those whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sin is put away. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no guilt and in whose spirit there is no guile. While I held my tongue, my bones withered away because of my groaning all day long. For your hand was heavy upon me, upon me day and night. My moisture was dried up as the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my guilt. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Then you forgave me the guilt of my sin. Therefore, all the faithful will make their prayers to you in time of trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not reach them. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like a horse or mule, which have no understanding, who must be fitted with bright and bit and bridle, or else they will not stay near you. Great are the tribulations of the wicked, but mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy, all who all who are true of heart. Word of God, word of life. All right, our second reading comes from the fifth chapter of Romans, starting reading from the 12th verse. Just as sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, and so death spread to all because all have sinned. Sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not, were not like the transgressions of Adam, who is a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died through the one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. And the free gift is not like the effect of one man's sin, for the judgment following one's trespass brought <laughs> condemnation, but the free gift <clears throat> following many trespasses brings justification. If, because of one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness <clears throat> exercise dominion in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. For just as one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. Word of God, word of life. stand as you're able. <clears throat> Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, you O Lord. Lord. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. 
Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. The devil took Jesus to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took Jesus to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to Jesus, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan. For it's written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left Jesus, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise, Praise you, O Christ. Please be seated. When I was around 13 or so, it was this comedian named Flip Wilson. I don't know if you remember Flip or not, but he had a very particular skit that he did in which he played a woman named Geraldine. And any time that Geraldine gave in to temptation and did something that she shouldn't have, she would cry out, the devil made me do it. Well, one day after playing basketball with some friends, I came in the house and was welcomed by the smell of fresh baked cookies. When I asked my mom if I could have one, she immediately said no, that they were for dessert and that anyway they would spoil my appetite. She left the room a few minutes later and as she passed, this jet stream of cookie fumes just got the best of me. And so I went over to the plate, justifying that looking was not eating and it couldn't do any harm. It wasn't long before I decided that eating the crumbs around the cookies wasn't actually eating cookies and couldn't possibly spoil my appetite. And as I was picking up cookies and shaking them for crumbs to fall off, one of them broke. And I hid my error of judgment by making another. I ate it. And it was good. good. In fact, it was so good that I grabbed a second cookie. And as I was spreading the rest of them around the plate to hide my moment of bad judgment, my mom came walking in. I was busted. And to make matters worse, when she asked me what part of no I hadn't understood, I responded, the devil made me do it. It was then that I discovered that apparently neither my mom nor my dad were Flip Wilson fans, and the consequences were painful. <laughs> this was not the first time, nor would it be the last time in the years that followed, that as my parents tried to raise me to know the difference between right and wrong, other voices caught my attention offering alternatives and choices that sounded too good to be true. And they were exactly that, too good to be true. <clears throat> As I learned the hard way, the question was, which voices could and would I trust? As we see in this morning's first lesson, that has been part of humanity's struggle from the very beginning of creation, where God creates the man and the woman and trust them with particular vocation of caring not only for God's garden, but all of God's good creation. And God grants them the freedom to enjoy all that God has made, permitting them to eat from every tree in the garden, except the one tree that could harm them and jeopardize the ordered life that God intends for them and all of humanity. God's terms are simple and clear, <laughs> and are grounded in the reality that God is God and they are not. And that this God who created all things good and shaped and breathed new life into the man and the woman loves them very much 
and desires and knows what is best for them. But then the serpent comes along and tries to plant a seed of doubt by asking the woman what God said. And instead of disputing that she heard God incorrectly, because she's heard God correctly, the serpent attempts to distract her and the man from their vocation and the freedom that God has given them to enjoy all of God's creation by challenging God's word and questioning if God can be trusted. The serpent suggests that God's command to not eat from that one tree in the center of the garden isn't out of love or concern for their well-being. God just doesn't want them to know good and evil because then they'll be like God. The man and the woman must discern whose voice to trust. Do they trust God and God's word and live with God on God's terms? Or do they trust the voice encouraging them to be like God, to make their own decisions, to go where they want, to eat what they want, to do what they want? Distracted by the attractiveness of the tree, drawn to this fruit that brings wisdom, the woman and the man choose to follow a voice that leads to death rather than life. A voice that perverts their freedom, leads them to neglect their vocation, and causes them to turn in on themselves, hiding not only from God, but from one another out of fear and shame. For as we heard, they weren't naked, they were naked. And there's a difference. Jesus faces a similar temptation in today's gospel. For immediately after his baptism, where a voice declares that Jesus is God's beloved son, the spirit leads him into the wilderness where he's tempted by a different voice. And after 40 days and 40 nights of fasting, a famished Jesus is approached by the devil. While it sounds as if the devil is questioning Jesus' identity, the devil knows Jesus is the son of God. What the devil attempts to do is to distract Jesus from his identity and from his mission, his, his vocation, by questioning his father's love and will for him and offering an alternative agenda, one in which Jesus used his power to satisfy his own needs and to choose a different form of glory than God desires. Three times the devil tempts Jesus and each Time, empowered by the Holy Spirit, confident in God's word, even when the devil tries to manipulate it, and trusting in the grace and love of God, Jesus clings to and listens to the voice of life instead of the voice of death. He chooses to be obedient to an identity and vocation grounded in God's will and on God's terms. After commanding the devil to leave, Jesus is provided for by the angels. But as Jesus leaves to begin his ministry, he will continue to be tempted to question God's love and God's will and to compromise his identity and his mission. But empowered by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the word and the will and the grace of God, Jesus will teach with authority, feed the hungry, heal the sick, give sight to the blind, cast out demons, forgive sins, welcome the unwelcome, raise the dead, and in all things embody the nearness of God's kingdom. All the way to Jerusalem and the cross, where Jesus will take upon himself our disobedience, our lack of trust in God, our fear, our death, and in the resurrection, God will once and for all show the depth of his love and grace and faithfulness. That is our hope as children of God, a hope that's poured out upon us in our baptism into Christ's life, death, and resurrection, where we inherit, as we heard in our second reading, Christ's obedience <coughs> and righteousness, and are free to live a new life and a restored relationship with God and one another. It's a life and relationship grounded in the reality that God is God and that we are not. 
and that God loves us very much and desires and knows what is best for us. And that in that love, God calls and empowers us for a particular vocation, the work of Jesus, that work of showing justice, caring for the stranger and the widow and the poor and the sick and the vulnerable, of, of serving and honoring God rather than ourselves. It's also a life and relationship in which other voices will always exist, testing us, raising doubts about whether or not God can be trusted to protect us and to care for us, particularly when fear and life situations seem to suggest otherwise, and tempt us to circle the wagons and to turn in on ourselves rather than being God's presence and offering hope, comfort, and hope and healing to others outside these doors. Which brings us right back to the question of which voices will we and can we trust? Will we place our trust in God and God's word and live out our vocation and freedom on God's terms? Or will we trust the voices encouraging us to make our own decisions, to rely on our own wisdom, our own strength, our own desires? That is the struggle and the focus of Lent. And so for the next 40 days, following the example of Jesus, as, as we saw in our introductory video of disciplines of prayer and the study of scripture and acts of charity and self-denial, we open our hearts and lives to God's presence and God's word. Again, not to avoid God's wrath or to earn God's love, but to discern and listen to and follow the voice of life rather than the voice of death to grow in trust of God, to return to God's love and forgiveness and grace. And again, who we really are, our baptismal vocation and freedom is God's precious children. It's a journey we do not take alone. And as we hear each week, it's one in which Jesus promises to be with us and is again this morning offering his very body and blood in bread and wine. And strengthening our faith so we may return to new life, life on God's terms. These are difficult times, but God is with us in all circumstances. And for that truth, we say thanks be to God and amen. Please stand as you're able. Our hymn of the day is number 325. I want Jesus to walk with me.
people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And now sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. You alone are God. Sustain your church in times of wilderness. Give wisdom and vision to bishops, their staff, and all entrusted with the ministry of administration. Counsel all who faithfully lead your people into the future. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You create verdant gardens and expansive deserts. Tend to the needs of every living creature. Bless those who work in fields and orchards, that the world is nourished by the fruits of their labor. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You know our temptations. Sustain those who govern and legislate. Instill in them a sense of your justice and righteousness, that equity and peace would pervade all the regions and nations of the world. Merciful God, we see our prayer. prayer. You are a hiding place for all in distress. Draw near to exiles and accompany all refugees and immigrants, especially children who travel alone. In times of trouble, trauma, or illness, surround your people with steadfast love. We especially pray on this day for Beverly and Glenn, Carol and Dee, Anne, Ruby and Cliff, Mark, Wayne, Stella, Sunday, Rachel, Floyd, Judy and Bobby, Sarah and Danny, Gail and Hoover, Jean and Jim, Jan and Jerry, and Donna, and all of those whom we now name before you with our lips or in the silence of our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You offer abundance to all. Bless the ministries of hospitality in this place. Care for those who tend to the needs of others, especially worship greeters, coffee hour hosts, and nursery attendants. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You alone are God. We praise you for the faithful departed in every age. Unite our prayers with theirs until our wilderness journey is complete and we rest in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, the peace of Christ be with you always. And also, also with you. Let us share that peace using American Sign Language.
please stand as you're able. And let us pray. God of good gifts, receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Christ Jesus, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast, grace our table with your presence. Come, come Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, come Holy Spirit. Spirit. With your holy ones of all, all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy trinity, now and forever. Amen. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness.
Please stand as you're able. And let us pray.
Almighty God, at your table we've tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and to touch the world with your love. God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless you in this Lenten journey. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 319. O oh Lord, throughout these 40 days.